FMIF alignment using the BNK 415 sweep generator on a 1969 Webcore 2449 four band receiver. I'm only going to be doing the FMIF. And this is the receiver right here that we're going to be aligning. There is no schematic available for this, so I'm going to be using the instructions for a Viscount Model 1000. I have the SAMs here for a Viscount Model 1000. All FM receivers are basically the same. You're going to feed a FM sweep with a 10.7 megahertz marker into the front end of the receiver and then take your scope uh, signal out of the basically the discriminator, discriminator output and go through and align the IF. Now this is the last this is the last thing you do when restoring an old receiver. You want to make sure all your capacitors are good, all your electrolytics are replaced and the thing is actually functioning properly. This is just kind of a fine tuning thing. Um, here we have our scope. We have our BNK415 here. We have it set to the 10.7 megahertz IF, FMIF alignment. And this is the SAMs for the Viscount Model 1000. Again, you could use basically any SAMs that has the same configuration. And our what we want to do here is we want to align the FMIF to look like this, this uh, with the 10.7 megahertz marker right in the middle. And the instructions are basically the same for every receiver. Um, let's see. There's only enough marker to obtain indication. Uh, let's see. Disconnect stabilizing capacitor C4, which this is the discriminator stabilizer capacitor. It's a little electrolytic, usually around 5 microfarads. Adjust for maximum gain and, gain and symmetry of response curve similar to figure 1 with marker is shown. So again we want we're going after that. You, here's the discriminator right here and this these are your two detector diodes. And this is the test point and this right here is the capacitor. And what you want to do, this is this is a 10 microfarad on this schematic, but it's a 5 in my radio. You want to tie, you want to disconnect this capacitor and tie on to the negative lead here, which I've I've done that. I've actually just cut one side of the capacitor and I'm tied onto the stub sticking out of the board. It's a bit challenging. One of the things you have to do is find a place of no interference on the FM band, and that's practically impossible here in Los Angeles. Every single frequency is taken up with something, so there's really hardly any place where there's no adjacent channel. And I have, right now, I have the radio cranked all the way up to 106. Point or 107 or however high it'll go. I have the, the tuning gang all the way open and I'm feeding my sweep in into the uh, capacitor, the tuning capacitor and you can feed it the best place to feed it is the tuning capacitor 
leg that's connected to the the uh, FM converter, FM oscillator, and that runs it through the whole IF strip. This is dark red. These colors are fairly universal. This is the first IF. It's the first IF transistor. This is orange. This is the second IF transformer. Second IF transistor. This is like a, a bluish light green. This is the third IF transformer. Uh, next IF stage, or this is the final IF stage in pink, which is the final IF transformer in blue, which is the discriminator. We're going to connect to a different point to adjust this one. So taking a look here. This is what it looks like right at the moment. You can see here's our peak right here. This is the peak and the marker is clear over here. So it's it's uh, off a little bit. So I'm going to start with the first IF transformer here. I'm going to try and I have some interference here. I have uh, I think the local airport maybe I'm picking up. So I'm going to try and tune that first IF transformer. It's going the wrong way. So that that's about what we should look like. You see we lose some gain when we do that. So next I'm going to go to the next IF. Ooh, there our gain comes, that brings our gain back up, but see it starts to fall off to the other side. So again, we're looking for maximum gain with the marker in the middle of the band pass. Okay, I'm going to the third. That's got to be the local airport. Now I've gone to the fourth IF transformer. Ooh, look at that one. Looking really. So I'm going to crank that up a little bit. Now I'm going to go back to the first. IF transformer. Now I'm going to come down here to the BNK. I'm going to bring the sync signal level down just a little bit. So we're getting so much gain out of it here. Back to the first. Remember the key is to keep the marker in the middle. this I can turn my scope sensitivity down a little bit you can see how you, this is turning the, the first IF transformer you can see how you can move the band pass from one side to the other. So we keep that centered. Now I'm on the third IF transformer. 
fourth. First. And you can kind of play with these. They interact with each other um, quite a bit. So ideally you want to just keep, you want to just try and stay, kind of go around in circles and get your maximum gain here while keeping the marker in the middle. Okay. And of course, the higher we crank it up, the more we block the uh, adjacent noise out. So that looks pretty good. Okay, now the next step Actually, the final step is just to um, light. adjust uh, secondary to place marker at the center of the cro uh, crossover. So this is just the S curve here. We're only going to see half of this. And we're, we're going to get this is we're going to get this from um, basically the audio, the audio output, which comes off the center tap here of the final IF and comes down here through the final IF and point B here which is the same line that continues down to the volume volume control. So I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this from here and I'm just going to tie it on down here to the volume volume control. And here we have our S curve. And this looks fairly close. Uh, the marker, you want the marker right in the middle of the S. And we're going to turn this one here, the blue one, to get the marker in the middle. See how you can move that there? So you just pretty much want it in the Pretty much want it in the middle. And this is your receiver tracking. So that looks pretty good. All FM receivers are basically the same. The alignment procedure is basically the same. It's a lot simpler than a television receiver. But it is the final fine tuning in restoring an old receiver. It's not one of the first things you jump in and do because it's it would be very unusual for it to be so far off that would it would affect the performance of the receiver negatively.